Good evening, everyone. Tonight I thought I'd show you a couple of points that I wish I'd been shown 70 years ago, right at the start of my piano playing career, that would have made me much more advanced because I would have felt right into the groove of the rhythm right from the beginning. But I wasn't shown that, and so I had to struggle to figure it out and have people showing me what I was doing wrong. So it's a lot to do with counting. And I took a, pay, a book, a simple book, ABC Book One, just to give you some ideas of what could be shown right at the beginning to start your practicing off on the right foot. When you walk steadily down the street, you head left, right, left, right. And we can put those numbers as one, two, one, two, one, as a count. And someone will just say, look, count. You're not counting. But I never understood what that meant because I wasn't understanding the length of the note, the length of the count, the length of the time from one pulse to the next to be in the groove of the music. So <clears throat> if you can understand left, right, left, right, and then put a micro count of something in between, one and two and. So one, two is left, right. And then put the micro count and say one and two and one and two and one. Then all of a sudden you realize you can't cut the, sh the and short, even if you're holding it through from the one to the and and the and to the two. So if I take a simple piece like this, oh, and the other thing is, is the pulse. In a, something as simple as two, four time, that means two beats to the bar and the quarter note gets the beat. If you can feel the one as not being forced because the music makes it already sound the strong beat. So you don't want to feel one, two, one, to. Rather, you should feel uh, passive on that first note and then active on beat two and then passive on beat one of the next bar. So one, two, one, two, one. So one and two and one and two and one and two. See, if you, don't, if you put the micro count, you won't cut that and short if you're listening to the length of that sound. So, one and two and 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 one. The other thing is if you can understand that the hammer is coming up to make the wire have a wave like a skipping rope right to the back of the piano because that wire vibrates at different frequencies. It doesn't just vibrate at the fundamental, say, 440 vibrations in a second. It's also vibrating at 880. And it's it, it has the fifth, and it has the, the major third, all these little divisions that are also singing. So when the damper pedal's down, all those colors come out because all the other notes that have those frequencies start up under sympathetic vibra by sympathetic vibration and make the piano really sing. And if I had been shown right at the start that the reason I don't want a soft finger is because I have to be able to sink in, flop down, and then draw the hammer up into the wire, then I give my finger a purpose, not just play this or play heavy or play light. It makes you think differently. You have to start to listen. If you want a tender sound, if I want a tender sound, I can't go. I can. It's how you sink into the keys and how you voice it to bring out the melodic line. Turning the hand doorknob rotation. You can flop down and roll this way. You can doorknob, you can go plucking to pick out a note more than another. All these different things that you learn over time in playing piano. But the fundamental thing of counting is, is just so basic 
And it's so easy to say, well, just stay steady, stay steady and count. But think of walking and how steady you can walk. But think of the length of each stride. Think of the length of time that note is happening. And then micro count it and put both sides of that micro count into play. And suddenly you're going to start to feel when you do that rhythm thing of uh, active, passive, active, passive, that kind of thing as well. You're going to start to listen to it for a pulse and then shape the phrase and go somewhere shape it and and arrive at a point and come and and at the end of the phrase take a breath and start to sing it again so if it's two four time and it's just going down and back up one two 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 one you see you can bend the time and stretch a little more expressively at the end of the phrase and things like that starts to make the music much more worth listening to instead of it just <laughs> just a bunch of notes. It's not, not nearly as interesting. So, and when these simple books, they start to combine quarters and halves, you suddenly realize if half notes twice as long as a quarter and you're micro counting to the eighth, then you've got four eighths in each in each half note. So one and two and one and two and you see da 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 and the and at the end has to have its full length of time. So one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two.